What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Winging the Podcast, episode 25. Well, I, I would be happy about this. We kind of had a little issue, but hey, we're 25, so <laughs> we got so with 20, us. 2020 but, been messed up. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> look, man, y'all know what it is. So <laughs> we have a special guest with us today, and we might have some more joined in a little later. Uh, the plan was to have a sort of mini Gamers at Large reunion. But you know, um, twenty twenty, and so <laughs> we got with us. But how you doing, man? Yo, what's up? I think we're uh, having the quote unquote reunion. The same reason we don't have gamers at large anymore. <laughs> People's not showing up. Yep, that's kind of true. <laughs> that, that that these are facts. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> these are very well noted facts. So, Andre, how you living, man? Uh, I'm doing all right. Um... <laughs> Still questioning people's intelligence, but I'm all right. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, do do. Okay, look. Let's be honest, man. Um, can we just say 2020 is a wash and just <laughs> get a restart? It, it, look, we, we no, not a restart. No, no, not a restart. Don't don't make us go through this. Restart again. means repeat. No, uh -huh. yeah, good point. <laughs> Move past this to the next step. <laughs> yeah, we need, we need a new game plus. Yeah, we need a new game yes, plus. On exactly. This one. So it, it it's been a couple weeks, everybody. Um, and some okay, to be honest, the shit just blew up while we were off. A lot. <laughs> so we kind of have to address this because we are a video game related podcast and geek culture podcast. So um FGC and the Smash community, what the hell? <laughs> What the literal hell? Look, look, look. I, I was kind of suspicious of them problems with the FGC already. So, I mean, kind of don't surprise me. It bled over in the smash. Well, oh, okay. Well, here's my thing. We're not going to go into every little thing because it's literally way too much. But <laughs> some of the stuff that I was reading from like Zero and the stuff with Puppy and all the I'm like, bruh. If this was how stuff was set up, I am not surprised Nintendo did not back y'all. I'm no, like Nintendo. Look, they looked at it like we don't know much about any of y'all, so we'll let you do what you do, but we're not associated. Yeah, like <laughs> so. That's what I'm like. Okay, and I, all you ever saw of, like last year, year before, uh, Nintendo needs to show that they they support the Smash community. Okay, first of all. I'm gonna be completely honest. Have y'all ever heard anybody saying Mario Kart is a is the next Forza simulator? No. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So why in the world? I get why people love Smash, but Smash, in all honesty, is a party game. Yes, it is mm -hmm. a fighter, but it is a party game. It is designed. Here's, here's the thing that bugs me. Here's the thing that bugs me with that statement, though. How can Nintendo not be supporting the Smash community when they make Smash games? Thank you. You can't have a community without the game. <laughs> but it, it's kind of it's an oxymoron. But the, at the <laughs> same time, they're not obligated to support a, a fighting community that they didn't start. Mm -hmm. No, they are not. <laughs> they didn't want. They didn't turn Smash into to this Uber fighting game that people who didn't want to learn more technical games could play. No, they didn't. They wanted it for fun. So the That's fans the main did purpose that. of it. The fans did it, right? The fans caused Smash to be elevated to an esports fighter or whatever. The fans did it. Yes. Okay, fine. Fine. But I, and it's, once again, Mar using Mario Kart as an example, because Mario Kart is a party game. You do not hear anybody in the Mario Kart community saying, hey, you know what? Mario Kart needs to be uh, gets love and support like Gran Turismo and, and NASCAR. Because that sounds stupid. <laughs> it does. I mean, so, I, I can understand the enthusiasm for having it be competitive, but anything can be competitive. Yeah, anything can <laughs> be competitive. If anything. You, if you push it that way. So, Okay, Nintendo's like, all right, look, yeah, y'all like having y'all like turning Smash into this type of game. Fine, 
Uh, we'll even bring back the Nintendo World Championships and have y'all in it. So cool. That that's fine. But we ain't supporting because we don't know you. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, how I, I, look, that that'd be like me. Uh, as ironic as it is, I do sometimes do it. But it'd be like me seriously complaining to Nintendo or Ubisoft or EA or any of them that they don't listen to my videos. Even though That's half the time they do some of the stuff I say to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, dude, at this point, I'm just sitting back looking like, bro, um, yeah, um, I understand that a lot of us have like, because I actually like watching like Mewtwo King, especially like Zero. I actually like watching some of Zero's like breakdown stuff. When he breaks down certain characters, but I'm like, I, uh-huh. I would never like, oh man, this is this is all this he is the man. I'm like, nah, he just he likes playing the game, cool. Yeah, and he does a decent breakdown. So I wasn't like holding him in high regard, but I'm just sitting there like, bro, all y'all doing all this crazy stuff. And like I was telling Butterworth before we, we went live, when you read some of the stuff how they were mm-hmm. set up before these tournaments, that was red flag city if you an adult. Oh yeah. Once again, not gonna go into it because mm-hmm. like you can you can read about it if you want to on your own. I'm not gonna go into how they were set up. Just let's just say if you're an adult and you over 18 and somebody comes to you and be like, Hey, we got you. Um, we 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 glad you came for the tournament. Um, we're gonna put you in this place, all y'all gonna be here. Everybody that's in the tournament gonna be here. Yeah, but they they like I I'm, you do realize I'm I'm 19, I'm 20, you know I'm 22, right? Yeah, it don't matter. Uh, you know, I'm 24. Yeah, it don't matter. You won't be in the same place with them. The hell you say? Makes no sense. <laughs> oh, and you would think though, like most tournaments, like especially high level competition, they're going to separate you by ages anyway. Yeah, or at least put you up in a hotel and y'all got separate rooms. Yeah, mm-hmm. at least separate rooms at the very least. At the very least. Let's just say that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, because some of them, some of those guys who was running the tournaments was a little older. They had eyes for youngin. Yep, that's just how it is. <sighs> like I'm just gonna say, based from my own personal experience, like, man, this isn't gonna go for everybody, and your experience may differ. But based on my own experience, whenever I've been around the Smash community, there have been some really sketchy looking people there every time. Oh no, 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 oh, no there are. Yeah. There are. I look. I'm not going to disagree with you there. There, there are some. I will say though, some of the sketchier looking people aren't the sketchy ones. It's the ones yeah. that don't look sketchy. Sure. <laughs> sketchy people. But that's but the, but they always did something that made you think like, okay, dude, something ain't all the way right with you. So like you you got these people staring at you like they Edward Scissorhands, and you yeah. like, why are you looking at me like that? Yeah. Like, do, do I got something on my face? <laughs> Yeah. So last week, um, I was on vacation and um I was I was begging and praying for something positive in the gaming community. Really didn't get it. But <laughs> but <laughs> we did have something happen, and that was the Origami King. They had a, a direct treehouse for well not a direct, but they had a treehouse live for Paper Mario, the Origami King. I actually enjoyed that. We're not going to talk about what happened at the end of it because that's just too hilariously wrong. But <laughs> I actually enjoyed that. I don't know if I'm going to get the game, though, because right now, you know, I, my backlog is ridiculous, and I'm trying to <laughs> save money. Yeah, same. I, I might have to get that at a, at a later date. But <clears throat> I did love Color Splash just because I love the puns. And the Paper Mario series is hilarity all the way through. So I did watch a little bit of the Origami King, and it it, it looks um, interesting. Did y'all get a chance to see that? I've been. I've I been got to start the, the video, but I didn't get stuff. Oh, okay. So, yeah, um, I, I got to start the video, but I did not get to watch it. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I'll have to sit back and watch it over. So I mean, the first trailer had me liking it, liking the idea and the concept, but yeah, I didn't get to see that. One. Yeah, it it's only about thirty six minutes, so it, it's it, and it's like a regular treehouse live. So, um, 
the only problem is that of course they're having to do this in a Zoom call while mm-hmm. gameplay is going. It uh, it's it probably would have been better if they were all in the same place, but <laughs> hey, but, it, but hey, it is. hey, 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 it's, it's not as bad as an Xbox experience, so we're okay. <laughs> These are also facts. These are facts. So yeah, it, it's one of those situations. I I thought that it was actually not bad. Um and you know you know what yeah we're gonna have to talk about what happened at the end of it. So way forward <laughs> has a new game coming out and they did it at the end of the Treehouse Live and it was for Bakugan. Yay! Huh. Yeah. Hooray. Bakugan. <laughs> you know what's, you know I don't what's funny? think anybody's interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> what what gets me is that, you know, being a Sega being a Sega fan since I was a kid has kind of primed me for being a current Nintendo fan. <laughs> I see where you go with this. <laughs> I don't expect anything from anyone. I expect disappointment at every turn. <laughs> yeah, because it, it was just like okay, because it's way forward. So we're like, okay, we've seen Shantae, we've seen them do uh, a, a lot of games that are actually dope. I was expecting to see something crazy, probably some action platformer or something crazy like that. And go with Bakugan. <laughs> no, the back. The bad thing is, they might make it a really good game too, and just nobody will play it because they just play with Bakugan. Yes, Bakugan. <laughs> <laughs> the hell, dude! Like you would came up better doing a Yu Gi Oh game. Like what the hell, man? Uh, yeah, well, Konami ain't gonna let that happen. Yeah, Kon- yeah, Konami ain't finna. Nah, nah, hell. But nah. I mean, heck, heck, even even if they they skipped over that, man, uh, let's let's go back to something I don't think anybody's done in a while: Monster Rancher. Yeah. Monster Rancher. <laughs> yeah, I go mean, back and do that. Remember about, swapping the discount discuss- for the PS One? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how about we discuss how they could do a new Monster Rancher? Go for it. Okay, let's oh. go for it. Y'all got to start mean, this one off because <laughs> there's, there's several different there's several different ways they can go with it. Mm-hmm. Like you can have the game and pop the game in your system, and depending on different save data that you have from other games. You'll be able to generate monsters from that, or they could go the route of <clears throat> having people actually have to hook up like some sort of disk drive or something <laughs> similar to a. I doubt the disk drive will work, but I'm just no, saying, we're, like, we're do a disk drive or something. No, or something similar like how, uh, or something similar like Amiibo, where you can scan Amiibo and it'll generate different monsters, and then they have their own toys to life stuff that you can scan and it'll generate monsters for the game. You, well, you just know hit it. You just hit it. I'll tell you exactly what it is. Because especially on the Switch, it can read NFC. It doesn't have to be Amiibo. It can be anything with NFC functionality. Your key fob. So you can scan your, your phone car. and get a monster. Oh, yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you I know what? That actually, yeah, that, 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 that would be sense. bad. That because yeah. then, then you you know, because just for saying if you want to say for amiibo, for example, you can actually tap an amiibo and it creates a monster that's like from that game series. Yep. Yeah. Or but maybe not even from the game series, but just giving them special abilities from it. Yeah. Something, Something weird that like nature. that, like a Legend of Zelda or 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 Metroid when gives you like an actual Metroid in game or some kind of right. craziness like that in game. Yeah. But, but either way, but like it's a possibility, and it'd be like I'm sitting here, like it would be interesting to do, just to throw yeah. that out there. Well, it's it's like this. The reason that it hit me so hard when you said NFC is because you guys are thinking inside of the box. You need to think outside the box, okay? What do you think they deactivate when you scan your clothes out at Target or Walmart? They deactivate the NFC chip. So yeah. anything, mm-hmm. there are so many things that have NFC in them. You can scan oh, you, you oh, have you spot people, a brand new you shirt, have bring people, home, get a monster. Dude, that makes sense. People sneaking, no, but you have people sneaking around Target and Walmart and scanning me. They would let this switch and be in their pocket. They'll slip the Joy-Con out, scan it real quick, and hide it back. <laughs> <laughs> and walk off. People just walking around Walmart with their switches out, skin. Hey, like, like, look, man, I look. I scanned that T-shirt over there. Got me a level twenty monster, man. 
<laughs> and it's sad because I know people will do that. Did we not learn anything from Pokemon Go? Walmart be escorting well, people I mean, out after be, people be in the store for hours. Yeah. <laughs> like, security you, protocol. Like, like he's just been walking around the store to hold up his his controller to stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, start, you cannot scan that steak with your switch. <laughs> <laughs> Or or even at the stores have little have stations at the stores where you get a, something that you can scan. Like they could also do QR codes. They do they QR could. codes through your uh, phone. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you got the you got the Nintendo you got the Nintendo Switch online. Make use of it. <laughs> it's, there's there's a number of different ways they could have this. They could actually do all of those things. Have your game data from that you, that's on your console generate monsters. Have scanning NFC anything with an NFC chip generate the monster, and then QR codes utilizing Nintendo Switch Online through your phone. So all three ways are valid. They could include all of them, and that would make the game very robust. That's actually true. Yeah, that, that I could hmm. actually see that working. Um, you do you do realize like if we get like a direct or a, like a um state of play next month and this leaks out, it's gonna be we know why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because they still on my ideas again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just 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 so you know, especially if they say it's coming out in twenty twenty one or twenty twenty two. Yeah, that means we already know what's what's going on. So <laughs> Dude, I swear. I swear that people would listen to our stuff and then like consider it legitimate leaks, and we'd just be sitting there like, "Do we said this stuff a while back? Why do people think this is real? Like they got it from us." That's how it felt, at least. Look, I'm still look, I'm still waiting for that Legend of Zelda MMO to happen. <laughs> dude, after after Breath of the Wild, I think anything is possible, dude. Because dude, look, 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 if I could get in a meeting with a Nintendo rep. Just give me five minutes. I can convince them it's a good idea. Well, I don't think convincing them is the problem. <laughs> no one Nint- look, I can Nintendo. Convince them, look, I can convince them it's a good idea and and convince them that I know how to do it. Well, see, because the thing is, like Nintendo made a game like Splatoon <laughs> with where people actually think it's. I can't even explain Splatoon, but you get the idea. <laughs> I mean, hell, so Odyssey. Somebody was clearly if you, clear you really want to do a game, <laughs> you want an explanation of Splatoon? It's punk rock with cartoon characters and Jello. <laughs> That's a valid explanation. Good point. Good point. <laughs> um, good point. That's why I, you know what? Because I always wondered, like, you know, like after they did that, the, the the game I kept thinking about after Splatoon one and two, I was like, why hasn't anybody done um, Jet Force Radio over again? Because I'm like. That's clearly what this is. Yep. (laughs) I would love to see if Nintendo and Sega teamed up for a Jet Set Radio game. Yeah. Oh, my God. That would actually be fun. Yeah, because that would actually be fun. (laughs) The way they... Because that's all I was thinking about. Like Every time I play, I'm like, dude, like this is nothing but Jet Set Radio with... Um, blinkies from Mario. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. They, they could just turn in a, into in a, in a post <laughs> in a post apocalyptic future where Mario's world got destroyed. Yeah, <laughs> basically, that's the little detail they leave out. <laughs> well, see, the, the funny thing about it is, like, somebody made a meme when it first dropped back in 2014. They're like, they show like all these other games. They're like, this is when other companies make a post-apocalyptic world. Then they show it off to the side to show this is when Nintendo makes a post-apocalyptic world. They show like Splatoon yeah. with like in Tokyo in Shinjuku. <laughs> like, like what the heck? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> These are facts. They... I mean, like that, that's the thing. You don't have to make a post-apocalyptic world be uh, sad. Yeah, you don't have yeah. to make it sad. You can actually make it fun if you want to. <laughs> no, to be honest, all of The Legend of Zelda is a post-apocalyptic world. When you all think about it. it. When you think about it, yeah. When you actually they, sit down and think make, about uh, it. They should make post-apocalyptic farming simulator. Do, and then watch that game sell out. Right? <laughs> Animal Crossing and the next Animal Crossing game, post apocalyptic. 
<laughs> hell, hell, every Pokemon game is nearly a post-apocalyptic world. Yeah, with horrible parents. In, with horrible parents in it. Wait, well, yes, with some <laughs> terrible parents. <laughs> like, you, mean, hold on. you mean to tell like, you mean to tell me he has a monster in a ball that can blow up a city? Yeah, good boy. <laughs> get get out there and get more of. Them. I'll be like, <laughs> my, oh, my, my personal favorite. Uh, the Kager's <laughs> ten years old, and Mama just let him leave and don't ever ask. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, don't, don't even check. Don't no, Don't do no phone calls. No nothing. This dude, this boy fighting gangsters and mobsters. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, all right, yeah, because that makes perfect sense. Okay, <laughs> he want to be a gym leader, but he got to fight Giovanni, who's clearly a mob boss. Yo, oh man, look, you want to talk about mob boss? You want to talk about anything mob and Pokemon? Look at Pokemon Adventures. Yeah, yeah, or my personal favorite, Pokemon Coliseum. They need to make another one of those. I like Pokemon Coliseum from the GameCube. Yeah. That was different. <laughs> no, you're thinking no, of didn't. you're thinking XD Gale of Darkness. Hmm. That's the one you're thinking of. You're not thinking of Coliseum. Gale of Darkness was like not technically yeah, so well. really a mainline Pokemon yeah, game, I am but it was kind of an RPG with Pokemon. Yeah, because that's the one you play as a bad guy, right? I think so, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I'm thinking about, dude. Yeah. That's the one I'm thinking about. So yeah, that one. Yeah, just forget what I said. Yeah, that one. So, <laughs> but yeah, I, probably about six thirty. So yeah, I, I'm. That's the <sighs> bruh, the, the the hilarity of all of that. That's, that's, so, that's the latest. Depends on how long that line. Uh, Andre. <laughs> Chat with somebody else. <laughs> Apparently, he is. <laughs> still going. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So, getting back to some uh, relative uh, foolishness. Um, let's see. What, what? There was something that I saw that I thought was actually pretty, um, kind of funny. I guess you could say, uh, <laughs> kind of. Okay. And once again, I can't find it. <laughs> Do you remember the gist of it? Kind of. Now I don't want to, I don't want to say anything because it's going people don't think I'm crazy. So let's just skip that and we'll come back to it if I remember. So <laughs> uh, Crisis Remastered is coming on July 23rd everywhere. The question yep. is, will it play? Remember that meme? Will it play? <laughs> is that a real question? I, I mean, I don't know. I, the the thing is, like, I, so I know of Crisis. I never played it because, like, friends of mine, when it first came out, was like, dude, unless you got a PC, it ain't worth picking up unless it's, like, maxed out because, like, the game just doesn't run well. So my thing is when them remastering it and then pushing it to console, did they fix all of that? It was never that bad. It was never that bad. All that talk was just PC fanboys trying to talk up their own systems ah. and justify the thousands of dollars they spent on them. That's ah. all it ever was. Okay, I, yeah, okay I... here's the thing. Back in the day, um, Crisis 2 came out right around the time that I had built a computer, mm -hmm. and I spent $350 on this and built it from scratch. So it was not some huge rig that was terribly powerful. Some of the parts I got were secondhand also. But I built this thing, and it ran Crisis 2 like butter. Okay. <laughs> it's not that hard of a game to run. People love to talk about it because it was horribly optimized. I'm sure if Shadow Fox was here, he would be going off right now. Yeah, because that's the thing. Like I know, because that's all I ever heard. I'm like, okay, if it's that serious, I'm like, then I'll just skip it. Because number one, it's an FPS, and there was thousands <laughs> of FPSs out. Yeah. So yeah, if you play one FPS, let's be honest, you played all of them. It's just a different story well, with it. To so. be fair, Crisis is one of the best ones I've played. Okay. It's because it's totally different. It's okay. But I mean, it, it's one of those situations where I was just at the time, I was just like, okay, I, I at the time, I, I don't, I got a job, but I ain't making that much. And I'm not finna, right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I ain't finna do that. So nah, I'll just, this is just one of those games I had to skip. Now, it had a cool look and a cool design to it. So, I was always, I always thought that was cool, but 
I'm like, okay, that's about it. But if they're doing a remaster and it's coming, they they say it's coming uh, July 23rd. This is a uh, tweet from, I guess it's Crytek. Uh-huh. Whoever's doing this, but they it is said that the Switch version will be coming as well as every other version on July 23rd. That goes to Xbox One, PS4, PC, and Switch. So I, I'm I'm guessing, uh, and apparently Saber Interactive worked on the Switch port. So Saber Interactive is not bad. That they're not bad. Uh-huh. Um, I think they did, they've done a good job as a. Uh, Porthouse, so they're, they're not bad. It'd be interesting to see because they did show some screens. I want to see it in action though, because you know screens can lie. Right? Like, yeah, bull shots. That's what they're called. Long, yeah. long history of bull shots. Yeah. So uh, I, I just want to see some gameplay vid, and then we'll go from there. Because at the at the time, I mean, like I've just I, I I've been lied to before, and I just yep. leave it at that. <laughs> I have been lied to before. So we do still have uh, Xbox. Microsoft's supposed to have their um, their big July event. Uh, I guess they didn't. They never put a date to it. They just said July. Hmm, could be any time. Hmm. Yeah, so it could be any time. But uh, question, what do you think we're going to see? Because I know they're going to they're gonna have to show uh, if Halo Infinite. That's just, they have to at this point. Um, they got to show I something think- more. I think Microsoft is really gearing up to show their version of backwards compa- compatibility because they've been yeah. talking about that a bit recently, kind of beating around the bush a little bit. Um, what was it? I, I just saw a quote on Twitter today. It was from Phil Spencer, and it said something along the lines of, you know, it's it's really not consumer-friendly to have generation-locked exclusives. And that tells me that they're looking to make the entirety of the Xbox library, Xbox period, Available for play on Xbox One or the new Xbox. Well, that makes so sense. Yeah, I mean, uh, t- well, when when I think about it, because the controller, the, j- just looking at the the Xbox it, itself, mm-hmm. their controller has never really changed, really. No, no. So, so I don't also, see how. It, yeah, they could they could do that. And what I want you to consider also is that. The Microsoft Games Pass was it is incredibly popular, incredibly yeah. popular. So what's to stop them from offering two tiers of Game Pass? Yeah, you know, the the all in one Game Pass, or maybe three tiers: all in one Games Pass, the Xbox All Games Games Pass. Um, oh, what was it? I need to think of a better name. All right, the Xbox All Games Games Pass, which is like all Xbox titles, everything the new comes out, all the old stuff, and Xbox Retro and. Xbox Modern. Three yeah. different style game passes. Yeah, I can see that is actually working. Now, the question is, because, of course, this is going to affect everybody else. I mean, yeah, I got to give it to Phil Spencer. This is going to affect their the other companies because mm-hmm. we've been talking about this as Nintendo fans for a long time. Like, Because one of the main reasons why I loved the Wii U was the fact that everything was available like we had virtual console stuff up through yep. in 64 my own my big beef was why wouldn't they put the gamecube one out people have been asking for that for years and i'm like you gave us the ability to get gamecube controllers and as it stands there's like two games you can play with your gamecube controller right <laughs> well there's more but you got to figure out which ones is compatible with it they're, they're more than two but like the main two are mario kart and smash um, but you have to like figure out which other ones are because they don't out- come out and tell you. I hate when Nintendo do that mess. Oh, you just figure, just find out on your own. No, why don't you just tell me? <laughs> it's way quicker if you just tell me. <laughs> but I think it's gonna affect everybody else because if if this works, if this works, people gonna be looking at their system like, hey man, why can't we do that? Very so. True. I mean, this is going to be very interesting. Now, Nintendo will be the ones with the main problem because they had a different controller for every dog system they ever created. <laughs> so you're like, okay, how is this going to work? <laughs> exactly. So if they do a Wii one, you could probably do that with the Joy-Cons. That shouldn't be a problem. 
uh, the main problem is probably going to be the N64 one because the buttons are there, but they're all awkwardly placed. <laughs> so you would have to find a happy medium, I guess. Yeah. That's one of my main problems with um like the rare replay pack on um Xbox. Certain games like um Jet Force Gemini is you have to tinker with that <laughs> control setting just to get it to act right. Most of the time, just because it it's it, the game was designed for the sixty four. It wasn't designed for nobody. It wasn't designed for twin stick. So it's it's that kind of stuff like that. But I'm like. I, this is going to be very interesting from a I, from a fan perspective to me because if that does happen, which I think it will, because they already said they were testing like what was it, one thousand games to make sure they worked. And the other thing too is, I like that Microsoft was like, "Look, you'll be able to play this across our family," which means X because I think their their low tier is Xbox One S, mid tier is Xbox One X, and the high tier is going to be Series X. So if you can play everything across that, it's just going to be like, you're not good. Like if you want the high end, high end stuff, you have to get a series X. If not, you'll be fine with your other two. I like the fact that they doing that, doing it in that fashion, especially after hearing about this upcoming, uh, the upcoming consoles and hearing some developers like, dude, do not expect a big leap in graphical fidelity. Cause you're not going to get that. It's more like a performance based thing not uh a graphical situation right so i'm like okay uh i can i can see that and if that's the case then that's that will make more sense for microsoft um pimping that out so to speak now i would i would hope to see them do something with all those uh companies they all those indie companies they bought (laughs) like three years ago uh, I would hope that they have that we're finally going to see their games come out soon because, like I said, they they bought. I think it was like back in 2018. They they there was a list of them, and you're like, oh, y'all bought all these. I'm like, cool, y'all finna have some games come out, and not, heard nothing since. Damn, you just have it. So I'm <laughs> like, okay, um, anytime now. So, uh, and, and another thing that I that I actually that I actually am kind of, that I was thinking about because Phil Spencer, he hates this console war BS. I agree with him. Cause I think it's BS. I think, um, it was pretty much made up to, so people could click on websites for clickbait and stuff like that. Um, oh, yeah. I, I don't think it, I don't think it actually helped the gaming industry or the gaming community at whole at, a, at, at large. I think it actually hurt it. Because, you know, you got people with unrealistic expectations for stuff and they would only listen to buzzwords and not even like they they weren't talking about the game. You could start hearing people. All they ever talked about was 1080p, 60 frames per second. They didn't talk about how fun the game was or if the game actually ran properly. It was always Uh 1080, 60 frames per second. I'm like, dude, every game doesn't have to be 60 frames per second. You know, I don't want to put like Ubisoft dropped Uno. Does Uno need to be 60 frames per second? <laughs> it's I'm, oh my god, it's so funny. People are like, oh, 1080p, 60 frames per second, and so on and so forth. It's like games used to always be 60 frames a second back in the day, like yeah. in the arcades, on your Sega Genesis, mm-hmm. on your Super Nintendo. Yep, 60 frames a second, rock solid, and like they don't even hit that. Most oh. of the time now. Uh-uh. And, and, and like, my thing was, I'm like, we've been talking about this since the the seven gen with PS3 and 360, and they never. It was all upscale. Mm-hmm. I'm like, because people would, I mean, and you know this because we, how many times do we get into discussions with people at the at GAL about 1080, 60 frames a second? I'm like, dude, they're not <laughs> even getting that. Nope. <laughs> like, no, it's standard. No, it's not. It's not it's standard. Not. It, no. <laughs> it's not standard. <laughs> well, Digital Foundry, I'm like, okay, all right, whatever. I'm like, I'm, like, yeah. I, I'm to the point where I don't even want to hear this conversation. If someone wants to talk to me about this, 
with yeah. when it comes to like console sits on something like shut up and just buy a PC. I do not want to have this yeah. conversation. I am not interested in it. If graphics are that important to you, then you need to build a box. Yeah, that's I mean, and, and I think that's that's the thing that that people need to understand. Like, dude, when if you if you're talking if you're still talking about graphical fidelity and all this stuff, and you're not playing on PC, I, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not here anymore. I'm just yeah. tired of having the same conversation over and over and over. It's like shut your mouth. If it's that important to you, then you would show it. But right yeah. now, you're just trying to win the internet points, and I'm not about it. Yeah, because it really makes no sense. Now, the other thing too that I, I think is going to be funny, because uh, you know we got the sports games; they're still going to come out this year, even though, of course, uh, I don't think we're going to have much of a sports season this year. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think it's time for a new blitz. We need new NFL blitz. We need. It's time to bring back like <laughs> NBA Street Blitz. Uh, what was the, the, yep. the like bring back Mario Strikers? It's time to bring back the yes. arcade games because, uh, bruh, um, if, if they do bring like for Madden, man should have an option with no fans. That would be hilarious <laughs> if they did that. <laughs> uh, NASCAR, oh, no fans. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, or, okay. or they have an actual option to swap it with like cardboard fans. Yeah, like just do it like you know, thirty-two bit style. Like everything is just cardboard cutouts. You know what? That would actually be awesome, and like yeah. have like a mode, like like um when uh Dragon Quest Eleven had their uh sixteen bit mode. Yep, have it like that. <laughs> that would be hilariously awesome if they did that. Man, I, would love- I used to play. St- I used to play sports games the whole time, but as far as I'm concerned, that genre doesn't even exist anymore to me because it's just not interesting anymore. It's the same crap year after year. Yeah, it's it's not fun because it, in the era of updates and stuff, to me, paying sixty bucks for a game that just came out last year with ba- when basically you didn't change the engine at all. Mm-hmm. All you all you really should have to do is pay twenty bucks for. A, um, to update the rosters, in my opinion, okay, because you're using I, the same stuff. But yeah, then right. if you did that, you wouldn't make no money. So e- and EA right. got to make that. You got to get that microtransaction. I mean, um, that uh, DLC money. I mean, um, that uh, <laughs> that actual. But also, yeah. l- let me uh, let me point something else out to you. Um, all right, do me a favor. Really simple thing. Name every current basketball title on the market that is current year. NBA 2K. Okay, now name every football title. Now name every football title. Madden. <laughs> right. Now, go back to, say, 1995 and name every football title on the market. Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Same thing with me. Hey, same thing with hockey. Hockey. Yeah. Is there even a hockey game on the market right now? NHL. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody is it's EA. Yeah, it, that's it because they bought exclusive, exclusive – they bought exclusive rights. I, yeah. I tried to get Ms. T to do a video on this, but I think sports gaming has been ruined by exclusivity. Completely yeah. ruined. Uh, well, it, it's kind of like anytime you take out competition, it makes you it, it makes you weak. That's why I'm like, dude, competition is what makes people better. I'm like, it right. makes your games better. It makes you, it, it, when it was uh in, when it was 2K. And before they got bought, when it was uh-huh. Vicarious Visions 2K and EA going at it but with Madden and college football and uh-huh. um, basketball and um, live and all of that, that yep. was like the best time to be a sports fan game yep. because they were going at each other. And the last thing that Vicarious Visions did that pissed 2K5. EA completely off was 2K5. <laughs> we all know it. We all know it. We all love it. 2K5. And they, 2K5, they were like, okay, y'all winning. All right, um, NFL, y'all winning, gave EA the contract. Fine. For our last game, this is what we're going to do. We're going to sell it brand new for $19.99. <laughs> yup, I bought it. And it was way better than Madden that year. It was. Way it was better. so much better. It was so much better. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm, if you, I would love to have been a fly on the EA wall. <laughs> Listening to that conference call when them yep. when them, when them CEOs was mad as hell. <laughs> How the hell did they all do us? Cause they basically they basically took a hit. Um, 
they took it. They took a financial hit for a little bit to basically give EA the finger. Yep. And exactly. because they made all their money back eventually, but they to give EA the finger, they're like, nah, we're gonna sell it for $19.99. Kiss our ass, we out <laughs> and drop the mic. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is, it's like that woman video game, NFL 2K5, heralded the end of the sports genre. Period. Because if you think about it, that singular video game kicked off the exclusive rights battles. Yep. And because of that, we've, we have sacrificed for every single sport because of licensing. It's like, we, we don't even get spinoffs anymore. We can't get arcade action sports games anymore. Especially not if the league doesn't sign off on it. Like, half the reason Blitz was cancelled because the NFL was like, no, we can't have these like massive over-the-top hits and things because it's just like bad PR for us. Yeah, when, so the NFL canceled Blitz. Yeah, and, and the sad thing about it was like Blitz. If you took that game seriously, you're a fool. It it was an arcade. Mm-hmm. Game. It was meant to be over the top, exaggerated, just like NBA Jam was meant to be. It wasn't meant to be real. <laughs> no, it wasn't. So th- that's the one thing I never understood when they were saying it would be a PR nightmare. I'm like, no, it wouldn't. Like how how. Th- Honestly, how would NFL Blitz be a PR nightmare when, one, it is an arcade game that's not a football simulator? It's not a simulator. You have your simulator, which is Mm -hmm. the Madden series. That's your simulator. So if somebody wanted to go to the technical aspects of the game, then, yeah, they just go to Madden. They wouldn't go to Blitz. Blitz had a completely different fan base than the true Madden head. Just like NBA Street had a way different fan base, and um, the uh, what was the other one that that came out? It was Blitz uh, NBA Jam. They had a complete because NBA Jam was two on two. It wasn't a basketball simulator. I mean, it would be cool no. if you could, um, you know, destroy a basketball goal by by setting the rim on fire. But I mean, <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> but like, it's unrealistic. It wasn't meant to be. A simulator. So yeah, I agree. I hate it when that happened, but I loved how Vicarious Visions pretty much gave a finger to everybody and dropped the mic. I did love that. That was like beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the loudest mic drop of all times in video gaming. When they just did that, they're like, you know what? We'll take the hit. We'll, we'll take we'll take the hit financially for for a few months, but we're gonna make a better game, and we're gonna make it nineteen ninety nine. And we're going to drop the mic and leave. <laughs> <laughs> and EA was like, nope. If we're going down, we're taking the whole genre with us. Yeah, basically. They were like, <laughs> okay, you don't understand. We don't care about being evil. We don't care. <laughs> so, yeah, and they've been, they've been doing that ever since. I mean, like, because I, I never understood why they got rid of Tiburon. Because Tiburon, yeah, Tiburon was doing the SSX Tricky and... Uh, the NBA Street Series. I'm like, mm-hmm. y'all have fun. EA had fun games back in the day. <laughs> That's I, I never understood that. I'm like, dude, these games are fun. Why did y'all stop? Like, why? But I think, um, and this is probably the, the last thing we're probably going to talk about because uh, it, it has been the five-year anniversary of the death of Satoru Iwata and Somebody on, um, well, not uh, a couple of people on Twitter um, brought up his uh, GDC 2005 keynote speech where he pretty much got laughed at by people because he basically told everybody what was going to happen if, you know, the focus got shifted away from making games fun. And I'd be damned if he wasn't right. Yep. <laughs> So everything he said has come to pass. Yep. (laughs) And I, for the life of me, I can't. I I understand it, but to me, it was it's one of those situations where you're like, I play like I I have a full time job. I play video games to relax and de stress from the day. Mm -hmm. I don't play it to be. I don't. I play to lose myself in a world for a couple hours a day. Um, that's, that's why I pretty much got it. Cause video games helped me get through college because 
college was stressful as hell. As anybody who went to a, a four year university can attest to, it, it can get real stressful. I would lose myself in Legend of Zelda for a few hours a day just to de stress. Mm -hmm. So if the game ain't fun, I can't have fun with it. No. <laughs> I can't I can't sit up there and just talk about graphics and all this. I don't like the game has to be fun to me. So you play games to have fun instead of to impress other people? Hey, there hey, is shadows. You finally showed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had and a late part two <laughs> trip. I, I of course in Shadow Fox fashion, I appear <laughs> significantly late. I was just talking about you too. <laughs> so I can't, can't help. Um well you know what? Since 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 I'm on that subject and we were on this subject earlier, but I do want to get your um take on this just because I found it depressing and hilarious at the same time. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> the whole uh, because you are a fighting game aficionado. Yes. Um, yes, that I that I am. Yeah. So, uh, Evo, buddy, um, we, are you gonna talk to your your boys that run that <laughs> or what? Uh, so we knew it was gonna be a hot mess anyway because. How do you run? How do you run a fighting game tournament online? And I know you know. Hey, we'll we'll, we'll use GGPO and it'll be fine, and and we'll just only GGPO games could be invited type situation or whatever, right? It was gonna be a hot mess. There's no way to commentate it. There's no way, not accurately anyway, without some type of weird delay. Um, and and just just the whole scenario, like there's no, there won't be any moments unless. It's just from the people that are commentating. So you can't have the whole, oh, my God, he popped off and everybody's like, you know, whatever. Yeah. There was no crowd, so there's no way to kind of gauge that. I'm, AEW, I think, has it right. But I don't think anybody's going to emulate what they're doing as far as the shelter in place, uh, but still um, close well, to the source material. Well, you have like a few people there just to have noise. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you have the allegations. Jesus, <laughs> I don't even know what the and, and and of course the the whole the me too you too type situation. Like, well, you too, and I'm like, oh god. And then that's just bad. <laughs> you know, it's bad when people are digging up dirt to see if a a girl is equally as as bad as 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 the guy. Bro, all, all I'm gonna say is this: twenty four and fourteen, and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, still. I mean, yep. I mean, there's no, there's no excuses. I'm yeah. just saying that when a girl is guilty, you know it's bad. Like it's yeah. clearly a culture issue. Yeah, and I'm like, man, like, yep. I don't think I've only been in in two quote unquote official tournaments over the years, and we're talking many, many years ago. I've never seen, and I guess it was more, maybe it was more adult oriented then. Uh, but even when I was trying to compete um, in earlier tournaments when I was only like 14 or 15 or what have you, I couldn't compete with anybody but uh, uh, other kids my age in Sunnyville. Like we didn't there was no you're going to place against this 21 and up person because they paid a different fee to get in anyway. So I don't know how this whole thing even happened where. All of a sudden, we got people of all age ranges all signing up at the same time, and they stand in the same hotels. That's just ridiculous. I, I've never been in that kind of scenario before. Well, according to one person, they weren't in like a hotel. It was actually in like a house. Oh God! Oh yeah! Which oh yeah! The, the made it worse. <laughs> the fraud house. <laughs> yeah, which, which made it worse. You're like, okay, hold on, y'all put everybody. That's why I was like, we were saying at the beginning of the podcast, like, dude. Now you know why Nintendo didn't back most of the stuff. They can't control that situation. Yep, and 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 if somebody ends up, you know, having allegations that's playing said game, they're seen as an extension of the game yep. or or the franchise at that point. Yep. So yeah, I, I can see why they don't. But and if they do their own individual things, I would imagine they do extreme vetting. They were doing extreme vetting for all the teams for Splatoon and. Well, I know and all that beforehand too. And they did that when they did the uh, what was it, the one for uh, E3 last year? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, bro, like the vetting for that was ridiculous. Well, okay, so now we got an issue because even one of the people that Nintendo vetted has allegations now. Yeah, one of the commentators. So yeah, ooh, so that. Yeah. It, 
That was saying even that, and you know they, you know that for that to happen, it really slipped through. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, and it, but it, I mean, it is not a game company's responsibility to literally follow people. I don't, it's I don't not. It, it's <sighs> really not. Um, that's why I always got upset when I heard people like, "Oh, Nintendo needs to support the Smash Bros." I'm like, "Why?" Yeah, because they you have made, no control over what happened. you made that game. I'm like, my analogy was this: I have never heard anybody say Mario Kart is a simulation racer should be held to the same standard as Forza. And you know, so they did that because a bunch of people, you know, wanted to make this game what it was. They did. So you know, Nintendo's like, look, we don't really see it that way, but if that's what you want to do, go forth. Yeah, you know, that, whatever. That's your business. You yeah, set it up, that's you. So don't come trying to sue us because yeah. somebody <laughs> being crazy has come to the line. Like, I'm, oh, man, I, I don't, I'm, it, it hurts me so bad because I love fighting games so much. And I, I just think that the, the culture is just super, super poison right now. Like, is there's no, and it's gonna have. I mean, unfortunately, it's gonna have. It's gonna have the red letter on it for a while now. So yeah, it's man. I whew. and I thought da uh, doa four lobbies were already bad. Now it's that that's happening for real. Like I thought somebody was just you know trash talking me on Xbox Live, but we are where we actually doing this at, in <laughs> person to person. Okay, great. That's ugh, oh my god. Yeah. Um. Well, hey. Uh, I, I normally would say it could be worse, but that would be a lie. No, and, it, it gets no worse than that. Like, and, and, shorter, shorter than murder, like the Madden situation, that was bad. But, and, you, and, but, but this, this is 2020. Is, this is 2020. Yeah. I, I'm not trying to be surprised by saying that. I'm not saying that ever again right now. Is, 2020 but, is every bit of the 2012 everybody thought it was going to be. Man, 2020 is a worse heel than MJF. Uh-huh. So... <laughs> MJF is a pretty good heel. I yes. like him as a heel. <laughs> and 2020 is way worse. <laughs> way worse. Oh, man. I Yeah, I don't... Oh, man. I, it hurt. Like I said, it hurt so bad because... I mean, I was going to see Killer Instinct back in the scene. Yep. Uh, they were they were trying to bring, you know, the, um, the Street Fighter... Uh, the... Um, what was Street Fighter? The Street Fighter 2... That came out on Xbox Live Arcade. That one they were trying to bring that back. Oh, the HD one. Yes, yes, because that was GGPO too. They were trying to bring back everything, Skullgirls, you know, and just just seeing Killer Instinct come back in full fashion, and seeing like all of the the, the people that were winning all the top eights for the last three years. Going, oh, man, I wanted to see that so bad, but now it's like I don't think there's ever going to be an opportunity again. That game is seven years old. I don't think there's a sequel in the works for the for the new Xbox, and that team is gone and done. Like that project, yeah, um, is... that, that was what Iron Galaxy, and they mm-hmm. on other stuff now. They're doing Iron, other stuff now. So. Double Helix and Iron Galaxy, and they yeah. you know, they both are moved on. And, so. and Double Double Helix is owned by Amazon. So yep. So yeah. that's not that's not that's not a problem. Again. Yeah. So. I mean, we hey, we could be surprised because Microsoft does have their event at sometime this month. Yeah. So we never know. We could be surprised. I mean, they did buy eighty eight thousand game studios, so <laughs> yep, and, and they won't tell what they're working on. So, I mean, what does that do? I'm I'm wondering what that does for uh, fighting game YouTubers. Like, uh, I mean, you can still, dude. Yeah, how, how was he going? Like, so he was supposed to have a job to be the comment. Well, he, he was, was going to commentate. compete too. He was going to commentate and compete. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, he can still do his thing because he did post a video, but it was pretty much. I watched some of it, but it was just if it sounded like him just rambling because he was like upset about the situation that happened, and I can understand why because he really is, and it's deep, something he deeply yeah, loves. He deeply loves. So I, I understand. Why? But at the same time, I'm like, dude, um, it ain't gonna stop your love of fighting games. Fighting games are still gonna be out. You can still do online stuff. And like with him, like he has people come through all the time. That's why I was like, I my my whole issue with the Smash thing is because Smash Brothers is a party game. It's not mm-hmm. a true technical fighter. It's not no virtual fighter. It's not dead or alive. It's not Tekken. It's Smash. Smash is meant. Smash is is at its best when there are people in the house. 
and they're, they they grab a stick. Yep. That's when it's at its best. Items on. Items on and <laughs> items on and let the and let the luckiest bastard with the with the Pokeball win. <laughs> Chaos so I, and twos. Yeah, so I mean, like, that's why I've never understood because I, I get it. There were some people who, like you said, they probably wasn't that good at Street Fighter and Dead or Alive, but they were good at Smash, and that's how they finagled it. And but, that's crazy to me because I, I I see some people graduate easy to Smash from fighting games because they studied it, but it's Smash is such a different field. The physics are so different. It's both 2D and 3D at the same time. Mm-hmm. And it's just the weirdest. I don't know how to... If you told me to explain that fighting game to somebody you can't. that that has only played Street Fighter 2, I don't know where to you can't. I don't know where to begin. You have to show it to them. I mean, even somebody that's only played Tekken, like I it, it, you play it for the first time and you're like, wait, that is not what I expect. Wait, that's not what it oh wait, and all these properties change the higher the percentage goes to. So there's certain combos mm-hmm. I can only do at one. Jesus Lord, what is happening right now? Like it that's that's that game. And, and then you turn on items and you show them what to do with a baseball bat. <laughs> so on top of all that, you have <laughs> items, you have, you know, if people know how to be real good teammates, if you're doing, you know, two on two or yeah, whatever, exactly. they can do combos well, that way, the the, the wombo combos. If yeah. you will. Well, that's the thing. The other thing too is like the way Sakura made this game. It is anybody can make anything out of it. You can make it a straight up uh, fighter with a health bar. You can yep. make it a you can make it a the craziest wildest eight players scramble you've ever had. You can actually have a two on two match. You can actually like you the way he made it is ridiculous. I w- I can only imagine eight player smash with only three minutes. Yeah, like everybody scrambling. Like I've this. done that. I've actually done that. <laughs> I played it. I played it too. It, yeah. It's a blast, but still, it's a mess. It's crazy. It is insane when you have eight people on the screen and you're on a and you're on a level like um, Brinstar with Ooh. items on, and you got three minutes. Three minutes. You're running. <laughs> <laughs> so the 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 because we did it at Thanksgiving. When mm-hmm. my nephew said came, so everybody got a stick. Everybody won at least once. Because yep. that's how crazy it was. Like it, stuff would happen that made no sense. The hazards was on, so that made it even worse. <laughs> Cause some of them stage hazards is like, really, bruh, Dracula, now you want to show up? <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, so and that's that's one of those things where I think Smash out of any other fighting game franchise. I promise you, it, it's it's the only fighting game franchise where I, I've, I've had the most fun losing. So, like, on, short True. of short of playing with, like, trolls online that repeatedly do the same things over and over again, um, and then they drop out once you figure out what their thing is. Like, if you figure out what their thing is, they immediately drop out and don't want to play anymore. That, yeah. that's, that's the only time it really gets annoying. But sitting down with, with people or playing in a lobby with, with people that you know, whatever, and just going at it and it's just most random. Like, I could only, I've been online a couple times and I only win, like, one match. And I have a blast. Like, that was hilarious. It was great to me. So, <laughs> I don't I don't know of any other game where I can go, I can go 20, I can go uh, <laughs> 1 in 21. And <laughs> I can tell you. And I feel I good. Say, like, yeah, exactly. I have, I have two very specific fighting game memories. Okay. Um, one involves Marvel versus involves a Marvel versus Capcom two tournament that was amazing. The second one is Smash Brothers when I got super high and played online one night <laughs> with, with the Switch version because like I don't know like I just joined a random game as Little Mac because I'm like I'm just like running around and punch people because it's Little Mac that's what he does and like they picked some waggy stage and they had it where the only item was the uh, was the, the end flag. Oh, wow. And they had it set to very high frequency. So, so it was just everyone running around for like six solid minutes fighting over these flags that kept dropping everywhere. And I'm just like little macking everyone off the stage <laughs> left and right, stealing flags. And I was just high as shit. And it was so fun. It was so fun. Yeah, see, and, and you don't get that like I and to be honest with you, 
I I think I've had more fun losing in that game than I've had with big win streaks in other games. I I oh yeah, winning a lot, winning a lot in Killer Instinct is stressful. It is extremely stressful. <laughs> like you you never know when somebody's coming in to take your streak and like Smash. It doesn't matter. Like it's it's great. I don't because I think the I think the only person that I've seen like walk the dog on everybody that um plays is Masahiro Sakurai. Yeah. And and he, well, he always plays with two controllers like Yeah, he plays with two <laughs> controllers at the same time like it's a freaking fight stick and then on top of that he's constantly saying, "Oh man, they almost got me." while he has not took damage. <laughs> it just hit, when, I, I get so upset when he does that though. I'm like, "Really?" Really? But, look, we get it. You're good at the game, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, perfect, perfect example. The the Min Men uh, direct trailer. He's pl- he's fighting against Falcon, uh, Captain Falcon, and Kirby. He does oh, not matter. take damage until he does knock both of them off once. And then he's upset. He's like, "Oh, it looks like I'm going to take some damage." I'm like, oh, what the- <laughs> "Yeah, <laughs> what do we do?" My personal favorite, my, my my personal favorite of all time of him is the Terry Bogart direct trailer, where he that goes to his classic path and straight up walks the dog on every character and is like, oh wow, I almost didn't get the 9.9. Yep. I'm, I'm shooting birds at the screen at this point because I'm like, I can't do that. <laughs> that dude is so good, man. I it's it's hilarious to me. And I do like his his ikea setup he got there um yeah i don't know it's obviously custom because he's like super rich but i i still want to at least see that build i need a schematic for that so i can build that i need because i so like in my loft i only have space for maybe like six consoles i need Mm -hmm. to build another tier on top of it so i can fit well his is long his is like his dynamic is super long it stretches across the entire that's why he has like two damn 60 inch tvs on it yeah, because you, mm-hmm. you can fit. It's 100, 100 inches worth of stuff. And he said that he likes to watch the news while playing. I'm like, dude, how? <laughs> no way. How? No way. <laughs> but no then you way. see him play and you're like, this ain't fair. <laughs> like, dude, is like, he's just, he, that is a true to life game. He's probably the only game I'm truly afraid of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly right. He plays everything, and it, yeah, he and he started talking about he his back catalog and stuff. He has to go back and play too. And the sad part is, he wants to talk about it, but he can't because everybody's going to think it's going to be in Smash. Yeah, that's that's a sad thing because like Sakurai, it, he really does like when he says like, "Look, man, I can't say this because if the if I want to talk about a game I find fun, people think it's going to be in Smash." Yeah, that's, he's basically another Owada. Like, yeah, like Owada still played old stuff too. Yeah. Now I did want to see Iwata take on Sakurai. I, th- I think Iwata could be nice. Sakurai in Smash. Personally, I don't think anybody else could. But <laughs> that I would think- be interesting, actually, considering he, that he was responsible for the the first first two games. So yeah. Yep. yeah, and the fact that he actually helped them get get out on time. Yep, as the president of the company. He's like, oh, well, I coded the first one, so yeah, I might be able to play you. <laughs> I might be in my recent competition. <laughs> I'm like, dude, that that just ain't even. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm sitting up here and I'm looking. I'm like, if you go to a Smash Bros. tournament and after you win, Sakurai says he want to match with you, I would be like, no, you ain't embarrassing me. <laughs> I just won. <laughs> I don't need to be depressed. <laughs> I play against Reggie. I'm not. <laughs> I ain't playing against you. I'll play against Bill Trennan. I will let Bill Trennan get Duck Hunt Dog before I play you. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> No, I'm not doing that. I need. I don't want to be depressed after I just won. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think I played against ahead. Jay once online when Smash, and they just gave up after that. Oh yeah, was that the one we were talking about barbecue sauce? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was that Smash for Wii U or was it? Um, I think it was Wii U. I don't think it was yeah. Switch version. Yeah, yeah. we. Uh, <laughs> that was a that was an interesting night. Um. <laughs> Uh, that was that was most of our nights though. Like we would, yeah. we would play we would play Smash on Wii U and be talking about all kind of craziness. Just in, in the we'd be in the chat or, or talking on our phones or whatever. It's just all kind of craziness. What, what uh, me and you and Andre were playing one night. Like what we were, we were talking about barbecue. What we, we were talking, talking about? We were talking about Bacardi. Um, <laughs> we talked. We went from Bacardi to 
what you're supposed to mix it with, and then okay. we went to pineapple juice. I don't, yes. I still trying to figure no. out why. Oh, yeah, because we were talking about how you had to put the chunks of pineapple in the Bacardi to make it taste right, to, to get the taste out of it. Yep. <laughs> and, and these are the type of things, bonding moments over Super yeah. Smash Bros. It's just, <laughs> just, just lovely yeah. stuff. Well, yeah, we were, we were actually talking about pineapple chunks in Bacardi Room. Nice. Yes. Sounds good and, to me. And you can't you can't do that in other games. Like Splatoon, mm -hmm. you don't have enough time. No. So it's, it's just one of those things where you play Smash, you're just like, yep, listen to my stick clicking in the background while we talk about insert thing here. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is like when we put that gameplay up on the old Games at Large channel. I got into it with a couple of YouTubers because – they thought that we were being serious. And I was trying to tell them, like, we don't play serious. Like, if you've no. ever been in one of our chats, if you've ever been, because, uh, but when we were playing Monster Hunter, yep. what would always happen to me? You died a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and it would, and I would die in a, in a completely messed up way that made no <laughs> sense to anybody involved. <laughs> I'm like, if I played with them, it was it was almost a constant that Devil Joe was gonna show up at some point and step on me. Yeah, I've never. I thought that was the whole point of this coalition <laughs> together was that it, it's not that serious. It's just people yeah. having fun, talking about games, playing games, what have you. But and yeah. <laughs> when you have a lot of people, agendas start popping up. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, true. You know, I'm not even trying to like so. You know, we all have our different games. Like, I yeah. suck at Smash compared to any other fighting game that I play, right? So, yeah. but I'm not going to sit there and say, get, get rage and then say, hey, y'all are whooping me in Smash. Y'all come get on this Killer Instinct so I can destroy y'all, blah, blah, blah. It's, nah. it's not like that. Because even when we played Killer Instinct, we was talking about uh, football the whole time. There you go. <laughs> Too easy. Yeah. Too easy. And I'm not I'm not that much of a pain to play with. It, and, and, and if it comes down to it and I know that I'm doing certain things, like, I, I notice that, hey, you know, look, I am like, I'm comboing it up or whatever. Random select. It's too easy. Yeah. So and I, I, and I get more enjoyment out of it because I'm learning more stuff while we're playing. Well, I got because I, I basically got told that because I didn't put, I think the 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 individual told me because I didn't put uh 500 plus hours into Smash, I wasn't a true fan. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> and at that point, I'm like, you know what, bro? First of all, my backlog is ridiculous, so I don't. I play way more stuff than just Smash. And two, I play to have fun. I don't care about. I'm not trying to, you know, toot my ego by saying I'm better than everybody. And it's a it's a video game. I think after five releases at sixty dollars a piece, and if you bought the 3ds version as well, yeah, I, I, mm -hmm. I think you're a fan. I think Damn, you're interested. Yeah. I'm like. It, I was, if I'm having fun, and that's when I told him, like, why, and I invited that particular YouTuber to one of our matches. He never showed up. So, that's at so, that point, I just ignored him from then on, because I'm like, you're not serious. So, I, yeah. I just ignored him, because I invited him on, I invited him, I invited him three times. The first time, it was me, you, and Andre playing. Mm -hmm. and the next time, it was me, Vicky, and Andre playing. And the last time, I think it was, uh, that was the time, um, Jamie, it was me, you, and Andre was playing. I think we, I think we did okay. play with Twilight at one point. I'm trying to think when, how long ago that was, though. Yeah. But I, I mean, but he, he never showed up. So I'm like, okay, I invited you. Clearly, you're not serious. So I'm <laughs> yeah. like, because, we, and I told him, like, dude, when we play, you will be surprised at some of the ridiculous conversations we be having while playing. No, you're, nobody's. I'm not gonna mic up. And then go on Smash just to sit there and be super, super detailed into this and be all quiet the whole time. What's the point no. of waking up? No. I mean, and on top of that, items are going to be on. So that whole, oh, we only play on Final Destination because I'm a competitive. Nah, dude. That's you boring. Play like nah. <laughs> you finna boring. Get, <laughs> get this home run bat straight to the head. <laughs> so well, here's the other thing, too. I think that if you're really that good, it shouldn't matter what the conditions are. Yeah, if, it, you, no. if you want, if you want to guarantee your wins, like just instead of guaranteeing your wins, just say out of how many how many matches or whatever you win, so many sets. You go by win percentage versus. I mean, you know, if if you're that good, it doesn't matter. Yeah, how anybody plays if you're that good because you know how to win in every situation. The problem is you have certain people who yep. know who know that 
It's just like with Mario Kart. Mario Kart is not about skill. Nope. It is about luck. No. <laughs> Smash Brothers. There, there, what's your- I'm gonna. I'm okay. I'm gonna stop you a little bit because I played my share of Mario Kart both online and in person. And yeah, luck does play a big factor, but skill also does make a big man. amount of difference. Well, look, look, I would man, say make, when I get that blue shell, they're not screwing up. I think when I, when I get that blue shell, all the skill in the world don't matter. <laughs> Well, I'm still half a lap ahead after getting hit by it, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah Depending yeah. on what it is. I mean, that but, bullet bill is crazy, too. Yeah. That bullet bill is just, ooh. That but just, that's, that's the thing. Tight. Like, like yeah. the problem with the, the thing about Smash is, you know, if, if items are on, there's a pretty good chance you're going to, it's going to come down to who got what in the last 10 seconds. Yeah. There have been plenty of times where I got that Pokeball and I was all happy and Goldeen came out. There you go. Well, I mean, what are you? You can't. There's nothing you can do. Yeah, in situations like that. And then there were times where I I got the pokeball, and guess who showed up? My boy Snorlax, <laughs> and I won. <laughs> so it's like, hey, it just depends, you know, on what you get in the last ten seconds. So I mean, it if you cut those, that's why you hear a lot of competitive Smash players always say you can't play, you have to play stock, you can't play with items on, it has to be Final Destination. Well, okay. How about we go on Big Blue <laughs> with these stage hazards on, and let's see how good you really are. Yep. Nobody want to do that. Because Big be Blue of playing the Rainbow Road on Mario Kart. <laughs> so... I'm, but if you're good, it shouldn't it, matter. It shouldn't matter. It, it that's have always that's has always been my thing. So I, I've I've always gotten into issues with the people that love to be on the competitive side of Smash because they would always have these certain set of stringent rules you have to follow to play them, or it's not a real game. I'm like, okay, dude, whatever, dude. I'm trying to have fun. You trying to stroke your ego? I don't have time for this. It, there, in the in the Tekken crowd, there was a bunch of people that uh, complained a lot about uh, about Kazuya and Jin because they have a uh, they have a crouching uh, a crouching gut punch that hits special mid. Um, yeah, so you got but, Eddie. But certain, yeah, certain characters, <laughs> certain characters, depending on their size and where they are, um, uh, it's hitting special mid on them to get the crush guarantee is random yeah. and they have the nerve to complain i'm like bro like you knew that i picked this character and you picked your character so you knew that 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 randomness might be there for that and you decided to depend on that move to seal your like i don't <laughs> yeah. yeah it's too it's too many moves in that game it's too it, you have too too big of it's too many options like same thing with Dead or Alive. Like there are certain characters that are just bad matchups, regardless. Yes. So yeah. if you don't know your character inside and out, I mean, you can't get mad. You know, and, and in certain scenarios, like say, you know, if you're trying to, if you're trying to do a lot of mix-ups in Dead or Alive with, with Ayane, and then you're playing against a bigger character that's either grapple heavy or they just hit really hard, like. Don't be upset if you lose sixty percent health from one counter hit. Like she's little, and that's how they designed the game. I don't. You can't be. Oh, you took half my life with that one. So you chose to roll the dice for her. Like yeah. you wanted to be combo heavy, or you wanted to, you know, spin all over the screen. So you know, and I love playing with her. But those are the those are the rules. That's, that's those are the rules. Those are the breaks. Yeah, so it it pretty much sucks. And people, I have just looked at the time. We are way over. So, <laughs> um. <laughs> Fighting games do that. Yeah. In, in review. <laughs> no, uh, I'm not going to do that. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed our little mini reunion type deal. Um, Andre had to cut out because he had something important to take care of. So we'll uh, do his uh, thing next week on the podcast next week. Um, we're supposed to be getting some uh, separate uh, – I don't want to call them directs, but you know, like separate companies going to be doing their own presentations over the next mm-hmm. few weeks. So we'll try to do those. Um, I'm not going to promise that we'll be able to do them um, the day they come out. So some of them might get done on Sunday when we do our winging the podcast. So just be advised, especially if they come out during the week, 
I work, we work. So if we can't do it, we just gonna have to do it on Sunday. So just be advised of that because I got a feeling we're finna get a lot of stuff back to back since there was no E3. There is no um, Tokyo Game Show this year um, in in a official capacity. So we're probably just gonna have to be getting doing stuff like this. It's probably gonna be presentation, 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 and we're not gonna know when they drop. It's just gonna drop the week of, and we'll have to do it like that. So. Um, Shadow Fox, anything you want to pimp out or anything like that? I'm just picking off, picking back off what you just said. Two consoles are launching this year. No, they're not launching this year. They finna, they're going to come out and say that they're not when they realize we got this second wave. Just, it's going to bump through. But that's, that's not either here nor there. So, um, uh, Butterworth, you got anything you want to pimp out? Um, play Animal Crossing and retro games. That's, that's all I'm doing. And World of Warcraft. You know what? That's actually not. That's actually not bad. Like there, there, there is a lot of cool stuff. And you know what? Um, I forgot to do this. I'm gonna have to bring y'all back. Um, it's July, and we're supposed to be doing the first six months of the year. I mean, I know 2020 is crazy, but yeah, I'm gonna bring y'all back for that. So, <laughs> Rona Diaries Part Two or Seven. <laughs> yeah, which time is running all together. So yeah, at this point, it's just all crazy. <laughs> So, uh, people, I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Uh, it, like I said, they go a little long. I do apologize for that. But it was a fun time with good friends. So, hope you understand. Um, <laughs> we will see you next week. Uh, I will be I, – I, I'm going to stick to my Sunday um, afternoon uh, live streams. So, if you want to catch on Sunday afternoons around 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you will be able to catch some – Live streams of random games. It just depends on what I feel like playing that day. I'll probably put something up on Twitter just to let you know. Or you can come to the Discord. Um, link is in the description. And if you have a if you have a game you want to see me play, just let me know and I will try to play that if I own it or if I have it on Game Pass or something. So uh peace, love, soul, all the other good stuff, and we'll kind of forever. And I'll see y'all later. Peace. Deuces. <laughs>